Hey everyone, it's Gina and welcome back to the Curly Hair Care for Beginners playlist. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to be talking all about how to get more volume at your roots, avoid flat roots, and avoid that triangle shape that we have all experienced with naturally curly hair. Having that triangle shape is something that I have definitely experienced. The first way to avoid that triangle shape is actually to have the right type of haircut. Now a lot of people know that getting layers actually will help avoid that triangle shape and that pretty much helps the hair stack better on top of each other without it all coming down to one length at the end. So that is probably the easiest way to avoid having larger, you know, lower half of your head compared to the top is have a little bit of some layers in your hair. If you don't have a lot of hair like me, then you'll want to ask for longer layers or just a little bit of a layer. If you go in and get tons of layers, then your hair might be really short or you might not have as much hair. Um, for me, my hair is really fine and low density, like I said, so I just have a little bit of a longer layer in. So I probably have a shorter section that's maybe this much shorter than the rest, but I really like to keep them long and I like having my hair almost all one length just because my hair is so fine that my ends will get really stringy and very thin if I have too many layers, so that is one thing to keep in mind. Some of you may have also heard of a diva cut and that is a haircut that's specifically for naturally curly hair that you have to get done at a Diva Curl Salon or a salon that has a stylist that is Diva Curl certified. And that pretty much means that they just cut your hair individually, like they cut each curl individually and they cut it dry so they can actually see how it lays. I've never had this done before. I would love to, but I would love to grow my hair out a little bit more before getting that done because I know that when they are doing that reshaping haircut, they do end up cutting off a little bit. So I do want to grow my hair out before that I do that. But if your hair is very thick and you have a lot of hair, then I think that that would be a great option to ensure that you get the right shape so your hair lays the right way and it stacks the right way without having those bushy ends and flat roots. So that's pretty much the number one way to avoid that is just have the right cut to start with because it's really hard to manipulate a cut that is already not right for your face or a cut that is already going to cause that shape so it's just hard to fix it with styling so that is probably the number one tip to avoid that the next way to avoid a flat roots and get more volume in your hair is to clarify your hair and remove product buildup if you are someone that currently uses silicone products then i definitely recommend checking out my video on what is the curly girl method and also how to start the curly girl method and in those videos i talk about how silicone based products can really weigh down the hair and over time calls a ton of buildup especially on the scalp i will insert some pictures here of my hair before I used to follow the curly girl method and you can see how way down it is. It didn't even look like I had that curly of hair, like it looked like I had a loose wave because my hair was just so way down with silicone buildup and that can also cause really flat roots because it's just weighing down the hair, especially if you have fine hair like mine. It definitely needs more lightweight products and products without silicone. So ever since I switched to using a silicone free routine and a sulfate free routine, my hair is so much curlier, which is why it looks so much shorter than it used to is because it is really shrunk up in curls and my curl pattern is a lot tighter now. So that's why it looks a lot shorter now. So back to clarifying, I did a video as well on how to clarify your hair in some different ways that I like to do that. But clarifying pretty much is a really deep cleanse that will help strip your hair from any silicone buildup or any excess oil that you might have on your hair or product buildup. If you are someone that likes to use heavy butters and oils on your hair, that can build up over time. So um, it's really important to clarify. I personally like clarifying once a week, but you can do it maybe once a month, depending on what your hair needs, but it really just helps to get a really deep cleanse on your scalp and prevent that buildup from happening, which will weigh down your roots. Another thing you want to keep in mind to prevent flat roots is the products that you choose to use. So the styling products. If you are someone that uses heavy butters and those often come in like a tub and they're usually designed for coarse thicker hair um, but you can use those type of products with having fine hair and I do do that a lot of times you might have seen I've reviewed products that are more of that butter consistency but you have to apply those very sparingly and I usually do avoid my roots to avoid them getting way down because those type of products are really heavy on the hair if you have fine hair they might weigh down the roots and just cause your curl pattern to look more limp um, also avoiding products that contain oils or using a lot of oils on your hair. Sometimes that can really weigh down your hair, especially over time. So the same goes with conditioners and deep conditioners. If you notice after you use conditioner that your roots are way down, then I recommend applying them from your ear down. I like applying conditioner all over because I do have frizzy dry hair. So I like applying conditioner all the way up to the top just to make sure everything gets hydrated. But if you do really struggle with your roots being weighed down, then you could avoid applying conditioner to the root. 
Um, another thing that also has helped me um, with more volume is using conditioner before my shampoo. You might have seen me do this in my wash day routine. So when I take you guys along in the shower and share with you how I wash my hair, I like to start with conditioner first and detangle my hair and then shampoo afterwards. And even after shampooing, my hair still feels really soft and I can still detangle with my fingers if I got any extra tangles from shampooing because I use that conditioner first. And then I don't always need to go in with a conditioner afterwards. So if you find that your hair gets really weighed down from conditioner, try switching up the order and conditioning first and then shampooing. Another common cause of flat roots is excess oil. Now naturally curly hair does not usually produce a whole lot of oil or it takes a lot longer for the oil to come down our strands because it is so so coily. Um, so naturally curly hair is known to be a lot drier, but we still have oil at our roots. And if you don't wash your hair very often, you can still get a lot of oil buildup on your roots, which will weigh them down. Um, if you have issues with excess oiliness and then dry ends, I recommend trying out an apple cider vinegar rinse. I have a video on how to do this in the video that I did all about how to clarify your hair. That is really beneficial for balancing out the pH, so it will prevent your hair from being too oily or too dry. But I recommend trying to train your hair over time without washing it too much. And the longer that you go in between your washes, you will gradually start to train your hair to produce a lot less oil because you're not drying it out. And if you are still using sulfate shampoos, that is likely drying out your hair and making it produce more oil as well. So it can be a long process, but once you let your hair adjust, it will eventually produce less oil and be less dry, leading to more volume at the roots. So the next set of tips that I have are things that I do when I'm styling my hair to help give myself more volume and help make my hair appear bigger even though sometimes it can be flat at the root. So my first tip is to rinse your hair upside down when you are getting out of the shower. I like to just rinse my hair upside down sometimes if I'm washing my hair over my tub. That's a really easy way to do it but even just rinsing that product upside down you are directing your hair forward which is going to give you more volume when you flip your head back over. So that's just one easy way. Um, you can totally shampoo and everything upright, but sometimes doing that one rinse upside down really help give you some extra volume. The next thing you can do is apply a styling mousse directly to your roots. That sometimes gives you a little bit more volume and give you more lift um, once your hair is starting to dry. So you can use something like the Diva Curl Styling Foam or also the Not Your Mother's Mousse. Those are silicone and alcohol free options. It gives your hair a little bit more texture. Um, that way you can fluff it and get a little bit more volume. The thing that I also like doing when I'm styling my hair is applying my styling products upside down. So if you notice in a lot of my routines, I will just apply my product all over and then I will flip my head upside down and brush it forward using the Denman brush or just my fingers. And that is to really help direct the hair forward because with curly hair, however your hair is when it is wet and when you are styling is how it's going to dry. So you really wanna to try to manipulate your hair into a different direction. That way once it's dry, you can flip your head back over and you have a lot of lift at the roots. The next one is hard for me, and this is avoid creating a part when you're styling your hair. One of the biggest causes of flat roots if you have a straight part all the way back, and this is what I used to always do, that tends to lead to a lot of breakage. You might have noticed if you switch your part to the other side, sometimes you'll have like a line where your hair used to be parted, and a lot of times people get breakage in that area because that's where they're always parting their hair, and it can lead to you know more breakage in that area. Um, but what I like to do is try to just direct all of my hair back when I'm styling it. So when I flip my head back over after being upside down, I will pick up a couple pieces using the Denman brush and just brush them backwards, like just around the crown area. I try to mess up the part and kind of zigzag it a little bit, which also helps it look a lot thicker. If I do a direct straight part, you can see that you know white line of my scalp. So kind of directing it in all different directions kind of zigzags it a little bit and it looks a lot thicker at the root because I can't see as much of my scalp because the hair is kind of going every which way versus having that defined part. But my hair tends to like to part just because of the way it's cut and stuff. So it's hard for me to just have no part, but I know a lot of girls with thicker hair than me tend to, you know, they'll flip their hair over to the side or something like that to give it um, more volume and less of a part. But my hair never wants to stay this way when I do it. So I usually just kind of um, direct the hair in different directions and I usually kind of line it up like with this eyebrow. That's kind of where my part goes. But again, it's not that defined line so I get a lot more volume that way. And that is one of the biggest things that has helped my hair with having 
more volume at the roots is just not having that straight defined part. I mean, you could part it all the way on one side and have it like I showed you like this, um, but then you have less hair on this side, so um, that's usually why I don't do that. But again, as you can see, it gives me instant lift just by doing that. Um, but since I've already applied my styling products with it in this direction, that's how it's going to want to lay because those products have formed those curls together. So you do have to do this when your hair is wet when you are styling it before you diffuse your hair. So using the Denman brush is something that has helped my hair dramatically while I'm styling it. I use this for so many different things. I talk a lot about this brush if you want to see my video all about my favorite hair tools. It's really affordable from Amazon and has really helped me give my hair a lot more volume because I can direct my hair up and away from my face using the brush. Um, you can just use your hands, but the brush just helps give you more of a ringlet, so it helps that ringlet kind of form um, back. That way it's not forming towards your face, so that really helps them kind of hook onto each other. So I can kind of curl these pieces backwards with the brush, and then that way they will kind of stay like this, and it's not falling in my face. So I use the brush also to give me more volume at the crown area, so I will pick it up right at the root and I will pull the hair up with the brush, which is kind of directing it up and back versus forward and flat. Another big tip for getting volume with the Denman brush is to pick up vertical sections instead of horizontal sections when you're working on the side of your head because that will direct the hair back or forward, whichever way you decide to curl your hair with it, um, versus picking up um, horizontal pieces is kind of pulling your hair down. So we want our hair to be directed always up and back to give us more volume versus pulling your hair down as you're styling it. So the next tip is all about diffusing and drying your hair. If you're someone that likes to air dry your hair, it can be really difficult sometimes to get volume if you have fine hair. If you have really thick hair that has a lot of volume and body already, Totally go with air drying. It's a lot healthier for your hair. It's less damaging without using heat. I wish I was someone that could air dry, but whenever I do, I look like a wet rat and it never looks good. Um, so I have to diffuse my hair to give me more volume. Um, it just really helps shrink up my curls more. So if you've never tried it, I recommend trying it out. Just make sure that you use a very low airflow and low heat setting, as low as your dryer will go. If your dryer is still burning you even on low, then you might want to consider getting one that's made for curly hair or one that has a very low heat setting because you don't want to do any damage and stuff. But um, I have to diffuse my hair every day. So I like using a diffuser attachment that has those teeth on it that sit outside of the bowl. So I've talked about this many times before, and that is because I like to use the teeth of the dryer or of the diffuser to actually set them right at my roots and give my hair some lift. So I use the diffuser really to give me lift directly at the root. It makes such a difference. It also helps to give you more curl definition with using a diffuser. It just helps so much all around and I get so much more volume when I diffuse. You also see that a lot of times I usually diffuse my head upside down and that is again to get tons of volume and it also helps me kind of see how I'm shrinking my curls up and it just helps kind of gather all of the hair into the bowl of the diffuser. If you were diffusing your hair right side up, you definitely are gonna get less volume that way. Um, I do like to switch to right side up when I'm getting the underside layer just to help shrink it up more, but overall I'm usually upside down when I am diffusing. One other thing I've been doing a lot more recently is after my hair is completely dry and I let it set for a little bit just to cool down and everything just completely dry, once it's 100% dry I like to pick out my roots or I like to fluff with my hands. I've tried using a pick before and it doesn't really do anything for my hair, I think just because my hair is so thin. Um, so I just like to take my fingers and I lean my head over and I give it a shake and this just helps lift the hair off of the root. It helps kind of break up the curls on the inside layer, but you wanna go from underneath when you do this. You don't want to fluff from the top section because that will just create frizz. We wanna keep the top area protected and defined with our products and just kind of fluff underneath. You could totally hairspray your hair after you've done that to help give it lift and hold that in place. Again, I don't really like having a lot of product at my roots because I don't wash my hair every day, so I don't wanna have too much going on up there and have it be too sticky, which then can lead to way down roots um, on next day hair. So I don't usually use a hairspray, but if I did want that volume to last a long time, I could kind of give it a lift and spray it a little bit with hairspray. Um, or add a little bit of mousse there or something like that to hold that volume in place. So my last tips involve refreshing your hair. I know a lot of you probably experience flat roots when you're refreshing your hair or trying to prolong your wash days and in between washes because our roots start to get oily throughout the week. You might start to get excess product buildup. So one thing I like to do is wet down my roots, like I said, when I'm refreshing. So I just spray a little bit of water on them or I kind of wet my hands. And then I will use that diffuser and put the teeth right at my roots and give it some more lift. So that is a good way to kind of boost the volume on your hair when you are refreshing. 
You could also use a dry shampoo or a product like the Diva Fresh, which is meant to kind of refresh the roots. It helps with smell and stuff, and it also helps to give your hair a little bit of volume at the root. I haven't quite found a good dry shampoo for curly hair. I don't recommend using ones that are designed for straight hair because a lot of times those will leave a lot of buildup on your scalp, but I wish that I could find one that was like a mousse. I feel like a mousse would be really good for naturally curly hair. So if you guys know of a good dry shampoo for curls, definitely let me know in the comments. So I also usually do diffuse my hair upside down also when I refresh. That's what I did this morning. So I'm on day three hair right now. And so I feel like I have pretty good volume at the roots because I did diffuse. So if I don't diffuse my hair after I refresh it, it's super flat and hardly has any body. So I definitely have to diffuse my hair again even when I am refreshing my hair and it doesn't take long because I'm not totally drying my whole head because I didn't soak my hair down when I refresh it. I just kind of touch up the areas that need to be refreshed and then I hit them with the diffuser for like five minutes or so just to kind of give everything a lift and lock everything in place. So that is all of my tips for avoiding flat roots and avoiding that triangle shape. If these helped you out, definitely give this video a like. So any products that I used or mentioned or any tools, I will definitely link those for you on the blog post that goes with this video, which is the first link in the description box right below the video. And you can leave any requests for this series in the comments below. I would love to hear what you wanna see next as part of this Curly Hair Care for Beginners playlist. I will link you to the playlist down below if you wanna check out all the videos in the series. We have covered tons of topics, everything from how to wash curly hair how to deep condition, how to style it different ways, all kind of stuff. And I really break it down in easy to follow terms for you. So hopefully it can help you out if you are a beginner. So thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. And I hope to see you back next week. Bye everyone.